all of you hello hello Hello. Hello, sir. What is your CR? हेलो सर हेलो हेलो सर हाँ सर पावनी सर पावनी कृष्णा हेलो पावनी यस सर दस साल पर डिस्टेंस पाइनी या सर मेनी मेंबर्स हैस टू जॉइन येट Sir, we can't hear you, sir. Your bo your voice has been disrupting. Oh, what's this? Okay. Yes. Hello, can you check now? Yes, sir. It is okay, sir. Now. No, okay, no. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, okay. That is there may be some work issue. Okay. So, so good evening, all of you. So we continue with class to class. So the part of you, know, the part, the first part of the diagnosis. The second part will start from the. Essential diagnostic aids. Okay, all of you know all of these essential diagnostic aids. The case history, clinical examination, the study models, radiographs, and IOPS, the bite wing and your photographs. Okay, the basic photographs. Okay, now. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. 
Is it clear? No, no. Sir, audio clear. is clear. Audio is clear, sir. Audio is clear. No, okay, okay. Interrupting in the middle, sir. Ma? It's breaking, sir. In between. Ah, in between. In -between. It's breaking, breaking, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. Teja, no, no check. How is the audio? Now it is fine, sir. No, it's fine. No, okay, okay. Yes, sir. We'll continue, okay. So the case history, you, you gather the case history from either the patient, parent or whoever accompanies your patients. So the most important you will have to record your medical history, the dental, the family, the patient, then the prenatal, postnatal. Okay. So the medical history is also very, very important. We will come to that. We have a question also in the form marks regarding the medical history in orthodontics. So medical history in orthodontics is very important. So sometimes you will have look it's back it was there in the papers okay so that is also very very important so the patient history all everything is very very important the personal details including the name age the date of birth okay then the sex and the address in the patient the geographical location address is nothing but your geographical location that is also very very important okay so now to add this the previous slide what you have seen the basic things all of you know which you see in your the various history forms of the various departments all the eight departments which you are into now so the most important thing after you come back post covid what i'm talking about so the most important thing is your travel history okay this is very very important you want to know from where the patient is coming okay you may be absolutely healthy but still you need to record this the travel history is coming from abroad when did they come okay so is he coming from other states okay there is at home home stay for 14 days then all is very very important for you that's the question okay so the case history it's very vital now it's going to be very vital post pandemic and you can expect in the final year all of you not only use the pages also so the questions will be there on COVID-19 okay so how will you handle dental patient coming with COVID-19 positive so you need to tell all how you will diagnose the COVID-19 patient with all different aids okay so the COVID-19 have to brush all those things but most of the things are put up in groups okay if you are aware in groups all the different facts will be in all so you should go through those youtube videos and you should know all the things okay it's very very vital now the practices maybe in the future okay so this is first sometimes so you need to be very alert all of us need to be very alert okay so the Already, some we are doing all this on the right side. Is 
DMS. Okay, I don't know what the pages are doing, but the UGs, I don't know whether you are coding in this DMS in the various departments. I hope you are doing this. Okay, so probably this is the paper listed practice. Then it's very important what you see now. Here is the future. Okay, so the future you need to minimize your patient visits for each small thing you should not rush because it is not advisable going to our post pandemic these conditions after the college starts okay you need to be very alert so for small things you can ask the patient to make a video call okay so the video call then you can possible take some pictures whatever the problem is maybe intraoral okay or extraoral you can just check then if it is very vital only you can give an appointment for the patient okay so all the precautions need to be taken when you come back this video consultations and there are so many new new cameras intraoral cameras which have come up now work has started in the European countries you will suppressed to see the patient just takes a small scan of his oral cavity or the face and sends it okay everything is recorded it has come already but it might take some time for us so be aware of all of these things okay so when you have a question on the COVID-19 so you need to write down all these things so this all you know this the prenatal prenatal period okay prenatal maternal with the tetracycline stain stains on the teeth viral infections intrauterine molding all this we have seen in the etiology i have told you all this fibroids of the mother's uterus okay that is also very very important all this prenatal history in the teratogens okay this is also seen in the papers the oral medicine paper or surgery papers you will see what are these teratogens so as you can see there most of the teratogens are related to the cleft tip and pen okay teja audio okay no teja hello okay okay no okay Okay, no, no. Okay. So the, all these teratogens, mostly if you have cleft tip and pell, then you have the mid phase deficiency in the vitamin D axis. You can see there is premature suture closure. Okay, and the diet also plays a very important role. Then you have the post natal history, post-sex injuries, okay. So the post-natal history, okay? the type of feeding is very, very important, okay. So the advantages of the mother's feeding is the act that activates the jaw muscles, okay. The mandible moves forward, okay, and compensates for the physiologically protected jaw, okay. So, if you remember the development of occlusion, that class, transient malocclusions, which I have told you, this is a severe overjet. Okay, the overjet is due to the recruited mandible of the baby. Okay, the severe overjet will be there, and there is open bite also. These are all transient malocclusions, they all get corrected as the child matures. Okay. So that is the thing, habits, trauma, all these things are also play, play a very important role, okay, posture. So the chief complaint, this is very important, you should not modify the patient's words, okay. The patient says there is some problem in my right side of the lower jaw, the same thing should be put there, okay. 
or the front or my front teeth okay you you should not write patient as the pain or whatever the patient says in the front teeth means you should not write in the incisor region okay that is not that is wrong okay you will have to write it on the patient's own words you have to write the patient's own words okay patient complains of pain in the front teeth that's all exactly that has to be put there okay that is the chief complaint so this is what i told you earlier you can see here the question is that you can see the importance of medical history in orthodontics so the medical history you'll have to write down the drug history the allergies so much is there because it is there in the form of section it was in the 2018 paper i think so you need to mention all these things it is if it is in the two marks you can just put this slide and leave it off okay you will get those two marks but but the four marks section you will have to slightly go into the details okay why that some of these things are re related this medical history for your orthodontic patient so the hypothyroidism you can see there there will be delayed eruption, eruption, abnormal resorption. Resorption will be there. So it is very, very important to record the thyroid. You will have to rule out the hypothyroidism or hypothyroidism, whatever it is, because they play a very important role. Because ortho will be moving the teeth, okay? Not like the other departments will, move, will be moving the teeth and the bones. So the abnormal resorption, you will have to abruptly stop the treatment. So you have to be very, very cautious. So the medical history is so important. You can see the drug history here. So the drugs history, the epileptic, epileptic patients, all of you know, what are the drugs used, or pharmacology, all this, what does, what it does or to the gingiva, okay, the hyperplasia how the tooth movements are affected. That is very important for us, okay? So we need to, we can't stop the epileptic drugs. We need to consult the neuro, neurologist, then we need to proceed, then we have to consult the periodontist. So it becomes an interdisciplinary case, okay? Periodontist then all the tooth excess comes out to be excised, then we need to proceed with our orthodontic treatment. A couple of cases we had severe epileptic hyperplasia of the gums. So those cases, we almost in the entire two years, we, need, we had to do the gingivectomy and gingivectomy procedures in between the treatment because it stopped the, our treatment process. So almost three four times the gingiva was excised, excised, okay? So that is the importance of all this medical history. You can see there the steroids, steroids, patient is using steroids, you'll have to be very careful, okay? Then the osteoporosis, all of you know what it, what it does, the resorption and the sensitivity. This is also very important. Many of our postgraduates, the which who have already cleared in the, in the various parts of the world, but they some had very, very severe problems, the latex sensitivity, okay. Then they had to stop on the patients also, so severe, so you have to be very careful. Take the allergy, the history of allergy, all these things, then you see the nickel sensitivity, most of your orthodontic brackets, bands, wires, all are nickel, okay? Nickel, titanium, the stainless steel, most of the um, wires, brackets. So the sensitivity, there are some patients, very, very severe. Immediately, the day you born and place the wires, next day they will be, they will come running with severe hyperplasia, okay? Severe inflammation of this of the entire intraoral tissues. 
So what you have to do, you need to immediately tip on the planes, then look for alternative methods. Okay. Alternative is you'll have to go for polycrystalline ceramic. Okay, ceramic or polycrystalline crystalline brackets. Much advanced brackets are there now. Okay. So all these histories are very very important. Till there, till that part, till here you need to write for your medical history. Okay. So that then comes your dental history, all of you know, the previous history of extractions or any trauma, all these things you have to take. Then the psychosocial history. This is also very very important for the patient. You need to observe the patient, talk to the parent. If the patient is an adolescent, growing patient, okay, you suspect some emotional problems, then you need to check all these things, okay. So the school progress also, but also you will have to ask in detail, okay. That also has an important role. Then this motivation I told you in the last class, part one of the diagnosis so the external and internal motivation external is supplied by the pressure by another individual okay parent or whoever it is father mother uncle okay then next is your internal comes from the patient himself inside need treatment okay then these are very good cooperative patients okay the expect low, the expectations will be low, such patients, the internally motivated patients. But the external motivated patients will have problems, there will be high expectations, okay. So all this play a very, very important role. So the family history is also very important the family the genetic history genetics okay so you have to any problem you have to just refer back to the parents also you have to necessarily examine the parents also okay so the bone you can see the hereditary genetic factors so you will see the family history you can see some royal families you can see the jaws jaws uh, they keep on transforming from generation to generations so what you see there is the Habsburg jaw that is a, that is a problem in the mandible okay Habsburg jaw that will, sometimes you will see that in the short notes okay that is due to the family genetics Okay, genetical history. Okay. So the shape, all these things are also important. The location, okay. So even the malocclusions are carried from generations to generations. Hello, sir. Hello, Teja. Sir, only 10 minutes is left, sir. No, no problem. We will continue. If it stops, no, and at the next class we will continue. Okay? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. No, no problem. When, you, when it stops, we will stop. Okay? Teja, this fellow will switch off his video. Somebody is here on the screen. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, some key manual to somebody. Mm. Switch off his uh, video, it is seen, it is obstructing the space. Yes, mm, okay, okay, okay. So the, so the clinical examination, coming to the clinical examinations, you, you have the extra oral examination, then we have the intra oral examination. So the, everything is very, very important. The extra oral examination, the physical evaluation, Okay, the child the height, weight, everything. Okay, height, weight. Okay, the physical growth. You can see the charts are there. The growth, height, weight charts. This all play a very, very important role for you. Okay. So whenever you suspect any 
problem, the height, weight or anything, you need to do some medical tests, okay? So the medical history is very, very important again here, okay? Then the general body type, you can see there, the general body type, aesthetic, rhetoric and athletic. So the body build, you see the ectomo, miso and endo, okay? Ecto is nothing you can see, the ecto is thin and tall, okay? And this short and tall little points, okay? So the mesomorph is in between these two. Then the gate, if you see the gate, you may think that uh, why gate is so important. Gate is very important, okay? So you can see you learn types of gate based on the medical conditions. And see there in the slide so uh, different types of gate, the waggling gate, okay. So that gives you some indication of what medical problem the patient is having, okay. The types described by the child, the ectomies and endo. So the gate I already told you. So the examination and your plan of lips, lips, the competent lips, incompetent, and potentially incompetent lips. The mental sulcus, you can see here the first diagram. Okay, see this. It is, still, it is normal, okay. See this. this is very, very shallow. That you will see in a shallow mental sulcus, you will see in a severe Biomaxillary protrusion, maybe a class one biomax, population also. Sometimes you will see shallow, okay, based on the intraoral characteristics. Usually it will be class one biomax. Then you see here class two div one or div two. This is a regular feature. That is because of the retroded mandible. You can see here very very deep, okay. Deep mental labial sulcus. So the nasal labial angle is also important. Uh, acute obtuse in nasal labial angles. Okay. So, so the blood plane angle, this you can check the, in the oral examination. This is also very important. The blood plane angle. Okay. And this high, high angle cases, low angle cases, okay, high angle cases, there will be vertical growth, okay, and the low angle cases will have the horizontal growth, then the chin you can see here, the various types of chin, okay, the adequate chin, the excessive chin, okay, excessive chin you will see in class 3 cases, and you have the recessive chin, I just told you, D1 and D2, you have retroded chin because of the retroded mandible. The facial index is also there, the posterior, then the cephal examination. You can see the shape of the head. Okay, shape of the head, you can see here, I'll show you, see this, this leg, the shape of the head, you'll have to view it from the top, okay, dolico, mesocephalic, and the pachycephalic, okay. dolico, is, you can see here, that is your dolico long, long, okay, mesocephalic, is average on both the sides, you have values also, figures calculated, it's just the maximum, the width by, is the width by the length, okay? So, the break step valley, you can see, the width is increased. So, that is your cephalic index. Then you have the squarish deformity that is caused due to the rickets, okay? So this is also, it will come into the medical history, okay, 
you see the rickets patient you need to check his features you can see the see the skull scale in the cephalogram you can see okay deformity of the skull square deformity then you have craniometry this is also in the groin so this was told okay craniometry the anthropometry and the cephalometry how to study growth okay study methods of studying bone growth okay this is one craniometry then you have the facial examination after you are coming in the in your external only there is so much okay from the head we will come here we are coming to the face now okay so the face you can you have so many you have see the facial symmetry okay then the anthropometry you see here this is directly measurement on the patients like patients who do the measurements that is your anthropometry so this comes in the in, in the interval we will come to that later okay so this is very important the poor man's cephalometric analysis the later view of the profile okay and examine the patient on the lateral view okay the side view when you are observing the patient the head position is very important look at this the first diagram is not proper okay patient has tilted the head so this is the proper position okay this I, I already told you in the cephalometrics okay that is the fh plane you can see here the frankfurt horizontal plane parallel to the floor okay but this is called your natural head position so in this position you will have to check this is called poor man's cephalometric analysis or profile analysis so based on this analysis you will have a straight profile convex profile in the class 1s in the class 2 d1 or d2 okay d2 sometimes you have convex sometimes you have straight profiles due to so the concave profile you will see in the class threes so the divergence you can see the divergence so the divergence is nothing but the anterior or posterior inclination of your see this this part the anterior or posterior inclination of the lower face okay in relation to the forehead okay so you have posterior divergence that you see in the class 2d ones so then you have the anterior divergence in the class 3s 